Hey there, everybody. It's Mike Delicio, and today I'm going to be talking about the top 10 art in games for me in 2022. So a couple of things I want to point out right off the bat. First of all is that art is going to be such a personal thing. Uh, all of these lists that we're doing, these top 10 lists, are personal lists, of course, but I think this one especially so because you know, your mileage may vary. What one person thinks is beautiful art, another person may not, and doesn't mean you're right or wrong, it's just your opinion. So that is, is first off. Uh, second of all is that I'm going to do my best, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say the names of the artists here, and I'm gonna do my best to pronounce them. It's very likely that I will mispronounce some, and, and I apologize in advance for that. Uh, I'm gonna do my best. Uh, so here we go from a self-avowed shallow gamer, somebody that really, really pays a lot of attention to art and components and board games. This is my top 10 art, <clears throat> pardon me, in 2022. My number 10 is Now or Never, coming from the artist and designer Ryan Lockett. Um, first of all, for all of these games, I'm not going to uh, try to describe the art. I'm going to try to let the pictures that you see tell as much of a story as what I'm saying. But I feel like any year that there's a Ryan Lockett game released, there's a very strong possibility it's going to end up on one of my top 10 art of the year lists. I feel like Ryan Lockett is just an immensely talented artist. And not only that, world builder. And, and that's what's so impressive is that Many of his games, most of his games, are set in a particular world, a persistent world. But every one of the games kind of gives you a different feel, a different color palette, maybe a different focus. And Now or Never is yet another just gorgeous game uh, that, that has more of like an orange and red color palette that I, I feel. Uh, just beautiful, beautiful game. My number nine is Ahoy from artist Kyle Farron. Uh, Ahoy is a kind of a nautical themed game, but what I really appreciate about it, and, and there's not even a whole lot of art in the game, but what I really appreciate about it is this sense of whimsy. So Kyle Farron has worked with this uh, publisher, Leader Games, uh, throughout uh, their, their uh, games. And I'm a huge fan of, of this artist's work. It's in games like Root and Oath. And in Ahoy, you have this same kind of sensibility. You'll see it in the pictures. But this this idea of whimsy and adventure and, and on a sea uh, and on a sea nautical theme that's just hitting so many buttons that I love. Um, I just love the look of this game. It's beautiful. It has the you know the, the again the seafaring adventure that comes through very well. And uh, I just love some of the character art, especially in Ahoy. My number eight is Monsters on Board. Um, and I'm going to go with what the artist tends to go by, with it, which is the Micho. Uh, I'm not going to try to pronounce his, his uh, given name. That, that would be uh, probably pretty rough. Um, Monsters on Board is a monster-themed game. And what I really love about this particular... The, the Micho is one of my favorite board game artists. Um, I, I think he just does such a fantastic job. Uh, his characters especially have so much personality. And in this theme... I think you really see some of this shine through. I, I absolutely love his approach on some of the classic monster tropes. Um, it just comes through. There, 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 there's, it doesn't take itself very seriously. Sometimes in, in these kind of monster games, <clears throat> there's different ways you can approach it. But I really, really love this kind of silly, fun, scary if you want it to be, but it's really not kind of scary. It's, it's just more kind of wacky and silly Monsters. So I, I absolutely love the art in Monsters on Board. My number seven is Lands of Galzier from artists Jesus Delgado and Sammy Laxo, uh, who is also the, uh, one of the designers of the game. Lands of Galzier is a narrative-driven game with a huge open world. And so there's hundreds and hundreds of cards in this game. And so much of the art is going to be on those cards, but it also is a game that has a web uh, application. And there is also art that is in, within that web uh, application as well. A lot of character art. Uh, and I really think that this particular uh, artist does a fantastic job with creating animal characters. So these are anthropomorphic animals. And, and it's not the first time that this uh, designer has designed a game with anthropomorphic animals. Actually, most of them uh, that I've played anyway have. And so this is, again, a game with 
hundreds and hundreds of pieces of art. And uh, I just think it's just fantastic. Looks fantastic. Hopefully you've seen the pictures and, and uh, know what, I get, what I'm getting at. My number six is Trekking Through History from artist Eric Hibbler. Uh, this is a game where you are, as you might expect, going throughout history. It has a kind of a time travel theme. And so you're visiting different eras in time and you're visiting different locations across the world. And this is just such a beautiful, bright, vibrant game where you've got some well-known figures in history and, and, and the depictions of them, I think, are fantastic. But you also have landscapes. Um, it, it, the, the color palettes, to me, are, are beautiful, impeccable. Uh, the, the character design is fantastic. Um, it really, it's one of these games where you are getting cards every turn and, and putting them in front of you. And you're kind of lining them up in a timeline. And I almost hate covering up one card with another card because the art on these cards are so gorgeous. But then at the end of the game, you can kind of go back through and look at all the places you visited and tell yourself a little story. So I uh, absolutely love the art in Trekking Through History. My number five is Merchants of the Dark Road from Andrew Bosley, Joey Julian, and Matt Paquette and Company. And this is an interesting one because Merchants of the Dark Road, as you might expect from the title, has a very dark color palette. And sometimes it's hard to pull that off, that off where, you know, it's dark and shadowy and you're trying to create a feeling of mystery and adventure and unknown. And they do that very well, but you still have beautiful, beautiful art, evocative, uh, mysterious, again, uh, that, that you might expect. Uh, but you still can can really see what's there. Beautiful depictions of uh, people and uh, wagons and towns and, and animals. You know, you're getting animal companions. Um, just a lovely, lovely looking game. Again, with a very dark co color palette. And that's not easy to pull off, in my opinion. And I think they did a great job with, of it here in Merchants of the Dark Road. My number four is the other end of the color scale with a tremendous amount of white space and use of negative space, and that is Namiji, coming from the artist that goes by Naide. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, this artist has worked with the, the designer Antoine Boza a, a lot. Uh, this is a kind of a spiritual successor to an earlier game called Tokaido. It's a very similar game, but this one is focusing on more of a nautical water theme, but it uses much of the same type of art that Tokaido had, which again is a lot of white space. But I absolutely think this is one of the most gorgeous uh, looking games of certainly of this year, but in a long time. Much like Tokaido, I think has beautiful art. Fantastic depictions of characters, beautiful depictions of, of uh, a, a kind of a, a town that is a, a uh, really you're going across the water, but you're going from different ports to port. Um, the way that the color and that white space is, it, it's just something that on the table you see it and it is just stunning. It's like, wow, this is beautiful. And you want to spend time in that world, which is, uh, I think a, a great accomplishment for Namiji. My number three is Flamecraft from artist Sundara Tang, Tang excuse me. Uh, and Flamecraft is a game that is just, I mean... It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous in every way. It is a game where these beautiful little artisan dragons that are represented uh, through a kind of a watercolor palette are traveling across these towns, uh, these stores in a town, I should say. And each of the stores have these beautiful depictions and the, the, the dragons themselves are fantastic. Um, this is a game that the art in and of itself is going to be something that's going to get people's attention. The fact that it's a, a great game is, is, you know, very, very important. But this art would, would have done a lot of heavy lifting if it needed to. It, it, it's just so cute. And I know that that word is, is to some people, a negative. It's not to me. I, I, th th this game does not shy away from being adorable. And it does it well. It, it's cute without being cloying. In my opinion, that's, you know, your mileage may vary. But I feel like this is a beautiful world that I want to inhabit with just lovely little details, too. Like, if you look at these oversized uh, store cards, 
you find little details in those art that are just, just fantastic. So I, I just think the look of Flamecraft is fantastic. My number two is Townsfolk Tussle from artist Stephen Lewis, Tony Mayer, and Rachel Rusk. Townsfolk Tussle is a game that is kind of evoking old-timey animation. The, you know, there's a term for it that I can't quite remember, but you'll know it when you see it through these pictures. Um, wow. This game is one that I just absolutely love looking at. You know, there are certain games that when you're done playing with them, you just kind of go back and look through the cards. And this is one of them. It is a game that I feel like I should mention has a little bit of the grotesque that it will play with. It can be a little bit kind of uh, violent and bloody, but it's not done in a gratuitous way. I don't think it's done in a very kind of silly way that I think befits this theme. Uh, where you are trying to uh, kind of knock out some bad guys. And so you're flinging like maybe some uh, slingshots or things along those lines. Uh, but the depictions of everything in this game, I think, are great. The, especially the characters, though. The characters are just so well done. They, 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 they come alive on these cards in front of you. And I just love the overall aesthetic and the world building of Townsfolk Tussle. But... My number one use of art in a board game in 2022 is the absolutely stunning looking Wonderland's War from artist Manny Tremblay. Wow. Um, this game, the first time I saw it, I was like almost speechless at how amazing I thought the art was. And what I think makes this even more impressive is that it's going off of a well-known previously existing intellectual property of basically Alice in Wonderland. And there have been lots of depictions of Alice in Wonderland out there. But this one pulls off this amazing trick of feeling both familiar. So you look at it and you know it's an Alice in Wonderland uh, depiction. But it also is so incredibly unique and specific to this game and this artist. It's just incredible. From the use of color, the kind of oversaturated colors... Uh, against the black backdrop, the incredible character depictions of those well-known, you know, the Jabberwock and, and Alice and, and the, the Mad Hatter, uh, etc. And there's just so many depictions of art. There's a lot of art in the game. Um, it is just a game that on the table looks like a piece of art. And, and so that to me was why this was a no-brainer for the, the number one depiction of, of art in a game is that on the table, it looks like an art piece, a playable piece of art. Um, just, just incredible, an incredible achievement. Uh, it, it helps that it's a good game too, a very good game. But, but the art in Wonderland's War just absolutely knocked me out from the first time I've seen it, and it has not diminished in my plays of the game. All right, well, there you have it. My favorite use of art in board games in 2022. I'm Mike Delisio. I'll see you next time.